His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa met at Gudaybiyah Palace today with President of the Senate of Jordan, Faisal Al Fayez, and his delegation as he delivered to His Majesty a written letter from the Jordanian monarch Abdullah II regarding the brotherly historic relations between the two countries and means to enhance them in addition to recent regional and international developments. His Majesty asked the Jordanian official to convey his greetings to the Jordanian monarch and his best wishes for further progress to Jordan. He hailed Jordan's huge developments on different levels thanks to the constant support of the Jordanian monarch and expressed pride for the historic brotherly consolidated ties between both countries aiming at achieving the best interests for their people. His Majesty affirmed the importance of such brotherly visits which contribute in enhancing bilateral cooperation in the legislative and parliamentary fields as well as to unify stances regarding regional and international issues. He said that the world is witnessing rapid changes which require enhancing cooperation in order to achieve the targeted goals. His Majesty the King hailed Jordan's legislative and parliamentary numerous achievements and loaded Jordan's honourable stances led by the Jordanian monarch towards the kingdom as well as its role in serving Arab and Islam causes and its role in maintaining regional and global security, stability and peace. His Majesty then reviewed with the Jordanian delegation the latest regional and international issues and for his part, the President of the Senate of Jordan highlighted Bahrain's development in various fields under the leadership of His Majesty the King and thanked His Majesty for his keenness to enhance relations between both countries, particularly in the legislative and parliamentary fields. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today the International Federation for Training and Development Organizations Outstanding Leader Award 2016 as the first international leader personality to win such award. The award was presented to His Royal Highness as he met at Gudaybiyah Palace today IFTD or CEO Nasser El Nafisi and the organization's Secretary General Dr. Udesh Kohli. The award was granted to the Prime Minister due to his tremendous efforts in achieving development and maximize human resources performance nationally and internationally, in addition to his contributions and support to human resources development initiatives, as well as for becoming a model for elevating the performance of human resources as a strategic pillar for the nation's progress. The Prime Minister thanked IFTDO for granting him the award, saying it affirms international organizations' appreciation for the successes achieved by the Kingdom in human development, thanks to the leadership of His Majesty the King and the contributions of the people. He commended Bahraini workers in different labor and production sites, saying that they are a source of pride as they played a great role in establishing a strong economic and development of foundation in all fields. He pointed out that all human development programs in Bahrain are parallel with economic and social development programs, which are part of a comprehensive development system that qualified Bahrain to lead human development reports for many consecutive years. He also said that Bahrain's vision focused on polishing the skills of its citizens, providing them with the best educational, health, scientific and cultural services, in addition to improving their living standards so as to empower the people and enhance their contributions to the development process. The Prime Minister welcomed holding the IFTDO conference in Bahrain, which is a great opportunity to exchange views on ways of enhancing human resources, wishing the conference and its organizers success in achieving the desired goals. And for his part, IFTDO 
WHO's General Secretary expressed honour for granting the Prime Minister with the award, which was approved by the board that includes representatives from 60 countries and thousands of international members. He said that granting the Prime Minister with the award comes to appreciate his efforts in leading sustainable development process in Bahrain and his success in reinforcing human element development indicators, which contributed in reaching a high position in international human development reports. IFTDO's Treasurer Bob Morton said that His Royal Highness' name was chosen from many leaders who were nominated for the award, saying that the jury agreed to choose the Prime Minister for his outstanding role in Bahrain's citizens' development. development and maximizing human capital performance locally and internationally in grateful acknowledgement of his local and international contribution to the human resources initiatives which have earned him various international credited awards of recognition for advancing the cause of people development through his influence as a leading example and role model in elevating human resource management into a major strategic function in the industry for which the IFTADO board has awarded him a special medal of achievement. And this is signed by Professor Udesh Kohli, our Secretary General, and by Bob Morton, the Chair of the Scientific Committee. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. FTD board, in fact, is honored to confer the International Leadership Award on His Royal Highness, uh, and it was very gracious of him to accept. The board feels uh, very happy and honored and proud, and coming to this country, which has great name in training and uh, investment in the people, in the human capital here, I think is an example for the world. A great honor and a privilege to meet with the Prime Minister of this wonderful country. 
small but mighty. Um, the few days we've had here, it's been clear that um, this is a very citizen-focused country, and made, we had a lot of hospitality. People have been very nice to us, and it's very calm also. It has given you some calming effects on me. I think it's also shown that um, there's a lot of emphasis on managing people and recognizing that people are central to sustainable development. I will be presenting uh, a speech on women's empowerment and leadership. And one of the things I'll be highlighting is how Princess Sabika especially has pioneered women's leadership and development. And really Bahrain is leading the way in the Gulf for developing women's uh, talent and developing women's opportunities. And I think it's testimony to His Excellency to, to support this um, long view perspective of women's leadership. And uh, it, is, it is not uh, an end, it is very much an intellectual journey that we all share. And we on the board are particularly honored and privileged to have awarded to the Prime Minister, uh, His Royal Highness, the first uh, award for outstanding leadership. Uh, and uh, as our current chairman, Nasser Nafisi, has said, uh, by making the award to your prime minister, the bar has been set very high for any future people to be considered for that award. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also received at Qudaybiyah Palace today the Ahliya University Board, led by Chairman Farooq al muayyid and founder Dr. Abdullah al hawaj who thanked the Prime Minister for laying the foundation stone of the new campus of the university. The Prime Minister said education is the cornerstone of the society, stressing that nation civilizations develop and prosper by its contribution to serving humanity with science and culture. He confirmed Bahrain's interest in education and empowering the people with knowledge and science due to its realization of the capabilities in contributing to the development process. He asserted the government's support to investment in education through a comprehensive strategy that aims to create the encouraging environment and facilitating procedures for private sector educational institutes. The Prime Minister commended the, the academic level of higher education in Bahrain and academic institutions' keenness to meet the demands of ensuring quality of education, which attracted more students from the region. He congratulated Al Ahliya University officials on the new campus and the university outstanding academic quality and indicators, wishing them success. For his part, Al Hawash thanked the Prime Minister for his constant care to the national education process, which turned Bahrain into an educational and scientific center in the region. He also said, Laying the foundation stone by His Royal Highness is an important event in the history of the university, which encourages it to continue its efforts to provide the best educational services that meet the demands of the leadership in building an advanced society.
كل ابناء الاهليه طال عمرك كلهم يتمنون ويتشرفون ب لقائك يا طويل العمر ويعتبرون ان كل ما حصل في هالبلد من تقدم ونما بتوجيهاتكم طويل العمر ولذلك هم مسرورين جدا وسعيدين بتشريفكم لنا في حفل وضع حجر الاساس لاننا نحن مؤمنين تام بان يدك الكريمه ويديك الكريمتين فيها خير كثير لنا وللبحرين ان شاء الله يا خليفه يا نظر كل عين بحريني ملك روحا شريفة يا رجل متفرد بحبة مثل ما الشمس بالتنوير يا إنسان ما يوقف عن التطوير والتعمير يا زارع أفكارك وإرشادك وإخلاصك لكل شعبك وما تبغي من الدنيا سوى البحرين تتحول مدى الأيام ديرة من أعاصير الهموم اللي تحيط بها نظيفة يا خليفة أيادي مجدها أفعال سباقة ورفعة شان ما توطي مباديها يا بوي الطيب عانق وجهك شراقة مع الأمال كل لحظة تجاريها نعم يا فخر يسمو بين براقة سما والأرض تقصد للي بانيها وتنبت حب مكتوب على وراقه خليفتنا وجودك عد براويها سلامة مقدمك لعيون مشتاقة تحيك الشوف لجلك وانت غاليها His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received at Qudaybiyah Palace today U.S. Ambassador to Bahrain, Mr. William Roebuck. The Crown Prince highlighted the growth of strategic cooperation between the two countries, which reflects the two countries' interest to enhance joint cooperation and coordination and serve mutual interests. He highlighted Bahrain's constant keenness to develop bilateral relations in the economic and commercial sector, in addition to reinforcing security cooperation so as to consolidate regional stability and support international efforts in facing terrorism threats and organizations. The meeting also reviewed Bahraini-US relations and regional issues. Her Royal Highness wife of His Majesty the King, President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, issued a statement on the occasion of the UAE's Mother of the Nation Festival in its first session, organized by Abu Dhabi Tourism and Culture Authority, which aims to shed light on Her Highness Sheikha Fatma bin Mubarak vision of enhancing family cohesion and spread the notion of tolerance within the Emirati society. Princess Sabika hailed the importance of the festival as it highlights Emirati women's remarkable contribution in the development of their nation. She hailed the remarkable support of the chairwoman of the General Women's Union, the supreme chairperson of the Family Development Foundation, and president of the Supreme Council for Motherhood and Childhood in supporting women-oriented issues on both national and Arab levels, aiming at boosting women's status in various fields. Her Royal Highness hailed Sheikha Fatma's initiatives of supporting Emirati women on all levels. She praised the numerous achievements made by Emirati women in various fields, which resulted in achieving a civilized and united society.
society. Her Royal Highness hailed the huge sacrifices made by Emirati women and called on the importance of building on their achievements so as to achieve progress under the UAE's leadership. Deputised by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, the Deputy Premier Sheikh Khaled bin Abdullah opened yesterday the 45th International Federation for Training and Development Organisation Conference, hosted this year by Bahrain. Daniel Deporto reports. Lessons from Leaders is the theme of this year's International Federation for Training and Development Organisations, IFTDO, World Conference and Exhibition, organised by the Bahrain Society for Training and Development in partnership with the IFTDO, Tamkeen and Saudi Aramco. Bahrain is hosting the procedures event for the second time, following a successful showing in 2002, affirming the Kingdom's competency at coordinating and hosting large-scale international gatherings. Around 20 distinguished speakers are participating, with hundreds of visitors from dozens of countries expected to attend, including a delegation of 55 graduate students from the University of Manchester. Now on its second day, the three-day conference and exhibition comprises presentations, workshops, panel discussions and networking opportunities, all geared towards the optimization of human resource development. We see many organizations struggle. Uh, on the other hand, we see uh, many organizations flourish and do better. So what's, what's, what's the difference? Why in the same uh, situation you see some winning and some losing? So there are, there are some lessons to be learned and we want to pass this lesson internationally locally to Bahrain. This 45th edition of the IFTDO World Conference and Exhibition is paying particular attention to the youth labour market and the professional empowerment of women, two areas of specific importance to Bahrain's demographic makeup and economic strategy. Not only is there plenty to be learned, Bahrain's leaders have wisdom to share with the rest of the world based on local experiences. The young generation, they have a lot of expectations. Expectations of engagement, they have a, uh, you know, high aspirations, and also they need to have a purpose. And I think a lot of these sessions will discuss their anticipation, purpose, where are we going, how do we really uh, uh, offer th them the opportunity and the platform and the bridges. The mission for all in attendance is large-scale transference of knowledge, skills, processes and technologies to cement the latest in HR global best practices. The ultimate goal is individual job satisfaction that aggregates to sustainable economic prosperity on company, national and global scales. There's always an end to the cycle and when that comes, you will have to, your people have to be ready to take things to that next level and if they're not, it's on you. I mean, they will you will lose the good ones because they will feel like you haven't invested in them and the people you have will not be necessarily prepared to, for whatever the next cycle in the economy is going to be. So I would say it's always a cornerstone of any important strategy and foundation of any organization to continue human resource development regardless of the macroeconomic factors going on. Bahrain's greatest economic resource is the men and women who make up its workforce, and thus the Kingdom's hosting of such a prestigious international event for human resource development bodes very well for the Kingdom's long-term prosperity. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto. The Speaker of the Representative Council, Ahmed El Mullah, chaired the weekly meeting today. The Council discussed a report by the Parliamentary Inquiry Commission regarding the case of rotten meat, where the Council approved the 27 recommendations submitted to the Government. The Council also reviewed a report on amending some law provisions on anti-unemployment insurance and referred the report to the Shura Council. The Representative Council Speaker sent a cable of congratulations to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister on the occasion of being granted Outstanding Leader Award for 2016 by the International Federation for Training and Development Organization. And Mullah affirmed the award comes in appreciation of the Prime Minister's efforts in leading the development process of Bahrain, which reinforced human element development indicators. He wished him good health and to serve the development and prosperity process of Bahrain. Also, Shura Council Speaker Ali Al Saleh sent a cable of congratulations to the Prime Minister on the occasion of being granted Outstanding Leader Award for 2016 by the International Federation for Training and Development Organization. He said granting the award to the Prime Minister reflects the appreciation of international organizations to his pioneering efforts in the field of human development, wishing him continued success in achieving the aspirations of the homeland and its people. 
Bahrain's parliamentarian delegation, led by First Deputy Speaker of the Shura Council, Jamal Fahrou, attended yesterday the Gulf Parliamentarian Group meeting with Latin America and Caribbean countries on the sidelines of the 134th International Parliamentarian Assembly held in Lusaka in Zambia. The meeting agreed on reinforcing parliamentarian cooperation and coordination in addition to signing a memorandum of understanding between the two sides regarding political and economic issues. Earlier, my colleague Marie Claire was joined by the phone with Shura Council member Dr. Saeed Al Yamani. First of all, I'd like to uh, focus upon the uh, draft resolution that has been taken uh, at the Standing Committee on Peace and International Security. So, allow me please just to focus on this uh, issue. The, uh, the draft resolution was entitled Terrorism, the Need to Enhance Global Cooperation Against the Threat to Democracy and Individual Rights. In fact, that draft resolution was based on resolution adopted by the United Nations, uh, General Assembly, as well as the Security Council, and a number of assemblies, the IPU assemblies in Bali and Bangkok and Hanoi. 2007 and 2010 and 2015. In fact, uh, this resolution uh, also considering that all the international cooperation in fighting terrorism uh, can only be effective if parliaments adopt uh, a series of legislative and budgetary measures at uh, aiming at uh, criminally public and punishing terrorist acts. Uh, for, for two days, we've been discussing the, the, the uh, uh, item, uh, well, nearly 20 items that this uh, draft resolution consisted. And there was a, a number of, uh, of, of bases in, in, in addition to the uh, concern regarding the growing, use, the growing use of Internet and communication technology and social media uh, that unfortunately can be used by terrorist organizations to exchange information uh, and plan and carry out attack and spread their propaganda. Uh, today we finished discussing these, uh, the uh, uh, 20 items, and uh, all countries have agreed uh, um, upon a number of uh, items. I would like to, uh, to, to mention a few, actually. Um, there is, of course, an agreement to fight terrorism. Um, and we call on individuals to refrain from using religion and religious heritage and culture to commit terrorist attack, which unfortunately fuels religious uh, and cultural prejudice. Another, another uh, item I'd like to mention that uh, uh, emphasize the absolute need for enhanced international cooperation and the promotion of interparliamentary information exchange uh, of, of knowledge uh, and um, in order to effectively address the threat of terrorism and dismantle terrorist net network. Um, the the, the uh, conference actually, it, had more than one topic to 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 discuss. And I was only involved in, the, in particular about this uh, topic. If you want me to talk more about what uh, has been uh, reached or agree upon, I would. Of course, now this it's not uh, the the IPU. It's uh, it's not complementary uh, uh, that people the, the country should take or should adapt the draft resolution or the resolution itself. But fortunately, Bahrain has taken the step uh, towards fighting terrorism uh, just the beginning of this year, I think, or last year, why, uh, when, when, when we, the Shura Council and the Parliament has uh, um, agreed upon um, law to fight terrorism. And in fact, I was so happy and, and, and all the delegation happy. Most of, if not all, the, the items in this uh, resolution is, is adopted already by Bahrain to fight, to fight terrorism. 
The Interior Minister, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, received the President of the Senate of Jordan in his delegation. The minister commended the deep brotherly and strategic ties between the two countries that have been reinforced during the leadership of the two monarchs. The Jordanian official asserted the support of Jordanian House of Senate, hailing Bahrain's democratic achievements and reform project. The meeting reviewed bilateral ties and cooperation. Foreign Minister Sheikh Khaled bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa received a phone call from his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov following up on implementing what was agreed upon after His Majesty the King met with Russian President Putin. The call involved highlighting bilateral ties and ways to bolster cooperation and coordination and maintaining regional and international security and stability. Arab Poetry Day celebrations continue today in its second session organized by Arab Organization for Education, Culture and Science in cooperation with Arab Regional Center for World Heritage and Sheikh Ibrahim bin Mohammed Al Khalifa Center for Culture and Research. The President of Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Hamay bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, pointed out the importance of celebrating Arab Poetry Day as it, considered, it is considered an important part of the Arabic cultural identity. Director General of Alex, so Dr. Abdullah Hamad Muharib, expressed appreciation to His Majesty the King and to the Kingdom of Bahrain for hosting and supporting Arab Poetry Day. <laughs> 